Hi guys, I thought I would start another reading vlog. I had a lot of fun filming the last one. I just put it up this morning, so I actually don't know how well it's gonna do, but I had a really good time filming it. Um, so I thought I would start another one this week. I've got a bit of a mismatch week. I've got a friend coming to stay, so I probably won't talk vlog while they're here because not really at that stage of the vlog life yet. But um, yeah, I just felt like chatting to someone about books and having a bit of a a bummy time at the moment, bummy, what, what even that is, what even is that, um, just feel really unmotivated for life, my health is in a really crappy place, so I don't really have energy to do anything, um, which is really miserable, but obviously always have books, so that's good, and I'm trying to just do stuff when I can, and then rest the rest of the time, I'm such a bad sick person, um, because I just like push my energy to the max and then end up like crashing in like this burning cycle. It's really fun. Um, but anyway, this vlog is not about my health and I promise I won't talk about it in every video because I understand it's pretty boring. Um, but yeah, oh my God, I'm wearing so much beige today. I just noticed beige trousers, beige shirt. I'm a, a, mono, a monotoned kind of lady. It's kind of feeling quite beige at the moment. And please welcome my new bookshelf. How, oh my God, this background is just upgraded, hasn't it? It's gone ultimate God level here. Look at that. I'm so happy with it. it brings me so much joy. Um, I've been so anxious recently. I've just been staring at my bookshelf since it came like two days ago. Got on Facebook Marketplace for 40 quid. Um, then I had to get someone to deliver it. But um, it's like secondhand. It's like pine, but not like really gross shiny because I really didn't want to paint anything, because I paint a lot of um, the furniture I buy, but I didn't want this painted. But I might, when my boyfriend comes back in November, get him to sand it down a bit so it's a bit lighter. But yeah, so stoked about that. Um, what else am I doing? I'm actually packing up a book right now to send to someone on a website called um, BookSwap. I will link them down below they are really cool they've just started i think they're uk only at the moment but they are basically like a no charge book swapping site so it's all run through hermes you know the postal people you put up the books that you want to swap and then you add others other books that you're looking for onto a wish list and basically every time you swap a book the person who wants the book pays i think it's three pounds for the postage fee and maybe one pound for the admin and then they receive the book but no money is exchanged between you and the other person but you get a, a swapping point and then you can use those points to buy or like to swap for another book so i got like four points at the moment there's definitely more people looking for books than there are books available but if you're into like general fiction there's I've seen so many copies of Sally Rooney. I've seen so many copies of um, Where the Crawdads Sing, like those t sort of like mass marketed books. They're all over there. So if that's your vibe, then definitely sign up. But um, I was doing it honestly just to get rid of books that I haven't read or aren't going to read that are on my shelves. This is actually a copy of Find Me by Andre Ackman. I was watching someone's channel the other day and they were talking about Andre Ackman and I loved Call Me By Your Name when I first read it and then I loved the film. But in hindsight, as I grew as a person, as we all do, I started to pick some holes in it and find some of the content of it a bit problematic. Um, I heard, it was actually, I heard the author talk um, at, about it and he was just said some things I took issue with, like that um, he wrote it as a straight love story and then he changed it to make it more interesting, which I sort of felt was a bit of like, LGBT erasure there. Um, obviously the age gap between the two protagonists is um, questionable at times. And then, yeah, I don't know. I just feel like it's a bit weird, not weird, but like we champion this book as like the best gay romance ever. And it's written by like a straight man. So um, yeah, it's not my favorite anymore. But anyway, I bought the sequel before I knew all of that. And then I knew that and then people reviewed the sequel as being so 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 terrible so I was like do you know what I'm not going to taint my my relationship with that book being quite joyous so um I just put it on book swap and I'm getting rid of it I've literally never read it so yeah I also put up my Tim Amanda books because I really want to get them all in the matching covers which I know is fucking lame but 
what can I do on the hoe for a static? So I really want the like matchbox one of, um, I think it's half the yellow sun or Americana. I'll put the picture here, it's so beautiful. And then I, I've got some, I've got the thing around your neck and purple hibiscus in the like matte covers with the different geometric patterns. But my um, Americana and half the yellow sun are like the photographic images and I'm not that into it. So I've swapped, I put those up so then I can save up and buy the new copies all pristine and beautiful and have them on my beautiful new shelves. So that's that, what am I reading? That's actually what this is about, isn't it? Burnt Sugar, hi Kieran, I'm reading Burnt Sugar still. Um, I actually had a pause on the weekend because I will show you what I was reading. Because this little short story collection from Influx Press turned up in my bag no, in my post box on Friday. And then I went straight to work and I just like swiped my post and got in the car, realized I didn't have a book with me and I was nannying all day. One of the kids was on a play date and then I went to a cafe with the little boy I look after and he was reading. So I was like, I'm gonna read too. Prime time at work and reading. Didn't have my copy of Burnt Sugar with me, but did have this. So then I started reading it and it's only like a hundred and 12 pages long so short and it's translated from the Spanish and it's written by an Ecuadorian writer Maria Fernando Ampuro we're gonna go with guys it's effing messed up this is some of the most grotesque stories I've ever read so it's called Cockfight and the opening story is about this girl and her dad and they um her dad's like into cockfighting that sounds so wrong as in fighting with cockerels the birds in like a ring, you breed them to fight. I do vaguely remember that being a thing when I was in South America, um, sort of like dog fighting, but with birds. Um, and the girl is being molested by her dad's friend. So she starts putting the severed heads of the cockerels in between her legs when she falls asleep at, in the stadium. So men don't try and touch her. So that's the kind of vibe we're going for. Then if there's also this one about this, this boy, who also molests this younger neighbour and there's like these hamsters that eat themselves. Guys, it's fucked up. So basically that's why I stopped reading Burnt Sugar because I picked this up and I was like, oh, I might as well finish it. It's published by Influx. Like, this is a proof it was sent to me. I think it's coming out in January. But yeah, it was, it was a ride, guys. It was a trip. If you're into, I don't even know what you describe as, it's not horror, just like messed up stuff. <laughs> um, um, and then on audio, but I also have the physical copy, is Inglorious Empire, What the British Did to India. This is a pretty comprehensive history of the British colonial period in India. And it's pretty dense, to be honest. It starts in like the 1700s, which I'm not a big history buff from that far away you know i'm i'm a 20th century kind of gal only but it's important to get context talking about the east india tea company like i knew bits and pieces um about the colonial period there i went to india a couple of years ago now and absolutely fell in love like phenomenal country um extremely unflinching and <laughs> quite terrifying at times but a phenomenal place um, so I'm really interested because we obviously spent a lot of time visiting relics from the colonial era, um, palaces and, you know, seeing costumes and stuff like that. But yeah, the audio book, the guy who I think is the author that's narrating it and it's really, really, he's really beautifully spoken, very articulate. I mean, of course he's articulate, wrote this book, but I mean, his voice is lovely to listen to. So I'm enjoying that and I need to actually get on and highlight this copy because it's not going to stay in my brain, especially with this current brain fog. And yeah, burnt sugar, loving, guys, loving so much. Um, I'm on page 90, so I'm actually reading it quite slowly because just my mind's been in other places and I really want to enjoy it. But at the moment, we're like back in um, the daughter's... Sorry, I think I already said what this is about, but it's a mother and daughter... Um, and at the point now the mother is like uh, in her elder years and is suffering from dementia, Alzheimer's, is basically losing her memory and we're going back in time and looking at the daughter's relationship with her mum from childhood until now. So we switch between the past as in when Antara and Tara were, um, was a child and her mother and they lived in an ashram for a while. So I 
they, there was a brief mention of the Hare Krishna. I don't know if the ashram they lived in was the Hare Krishna ashram. Hare Krishna, like a religious group all around the world. Very bizarrely had quite a few run-ins with them in my time <laughs> um, from traveling. And then where I live now, there's quite a big Hare Krishna community. I don't know if the ashram they're talking about in here is the same or if it's um, they just mentioned Hare Krishna and now they're not going to have to ask Kieran about that. Um, but I'm savouring it because I feel like I'm really tired at the moment and I really want to give it my full energy. But from the passages I do read, I'm obsessed. It's really beautifully written, and really funny and really, really um, compulsive. But yeah, so that's my reading at the moment. Just spent 10 minutes rambling to you. I'm on reading week this week from uni. So I don't have like classes, but I've got a crap ton of studying to do. Um and stuff I need to get prepped for like personal academic stuff um so yeah that's that's me I've got acupuncture today so excited never so excited for someone to push needles into my baby toes can't wait um but I'll catch up with you when I come back and let you know how um my reading went in the car. So I'm gonna drive and listen to my audiobook, Inglorious Empire, but there's also a podcast I really want to listen to. I don't know if you guys tune into the Adam Buxton show. He is one of my favorite people in the world. He's just like a podcast hug, which is so overdone as a phrase, but I love him. And he has Blind Boy, who is an Irish um, podcaster, writer, all round amazing man. If you don't listen to the Blind Boy podcast, need to get on that too but anyway they're doing a collab which is like collab of the century I'm so excited um so I might listen to that as well and switch between that and my audiobook because having quite an intense audiobook is um a bit much sometimes for like a longer drive so yeah gonna do that and then I will catch up with you when I'm back from acupuncture I'm just back from my really crappy day to be honest um I didn't check my emails this morning and didn't see that my appointment was cancelled so I drove like an hour and only then did I get a text from the practitioner who does my acupuncture to say oh I hope you got my email like sorry I've got covid symptoms da, da, da. so that was shit <laughs> so shit but I listened to the Adam Blackson podcast I spoke about and it was so good I'm gonna link it down below it was just phenomenal I love how much they admire each other I briefly reference who each of them were but they discussed um postmodernism, um post-structuralism and talked about art as an influence they made some really interesting points which I think are very pertinent when we're talking about literature to um humor um degrading the respect that a piece of work can get and then they were talking specifically about novelty and comedy songs but Adam Buxton said that he thinks it goes across all artwork that um, things are seen as less um, less important in a critical eye when they are humorous. And I think particularly in literature, that's very true. And a lot of things are written off as um, less important if they are um, funny because therefore they are not serious. And he talked about the use of satire, which I think I'm very um, conscious of doing. And I know a lot of novelists consider their novels satire when really satire is just a more serious word for funny or humorous um, and things are cloaked as satire when maybe they aren't satirical always but for some reason that gets better recognition in cultural circles if we um, note something as um, satirical as opposed to humorous. So I thought that was really interesting they also discussed the power of language which obviously is um, important and quite interesting when I'm reading uh, Inglorious Empire which I obviously listened to in the car as well um, and that discussion of uh, colonialism and imperialism in India and the words of which we've taken or that have become part of our lexicon that we've taken from other places and there was some really interesting points in the book not about language but about the penal code and how that um is still being used to upheld patriarchal and caste systems and all sorts of uh problematic i guess 
discourse in India. Um, I will link a bookstagrammer below the Bankrupt Bookworm. He posts a lot about the political ongoings in India and the different social justice movements that are trying to make way for a fairer and more just um, society. But it's really interesting to consider all of the, I guess, collateral damage that colonialism caused um, that maybe isn't cited as often, such as the way that England imported the um, democracy system that we use over here with parliamentary um, and constituencies and how they try to translate that to a much bigger country and a much diverse group, more diverse group of people and how still that causes problems for India today and it would be much easier to move to a more presidential system but because of there are still people there who have ties to the colonial era that that's not possible at the moment so I thought that was really interesting. Good morning, people. I am making a pot of tea, my fave. I'm out of breath because I just carried all my online groceries upstairs at once. I didn't want to go back down twice. Um, oh my god, don't mind the mess in the back of my kitchen. But the supermarket man forgot, or the van wasn't loaded with my frozen items, which means no veggie sausage rolls this week, which obviously is not. A big deal in the grand scheme of things but I'm just annoying because I love veggie sausage rolls. <laughs> I can't think what else I had frozen but yeah so I'm gonna unpack my shopping and then get started on the day it's like eight now I've got some friend coming over to study we've got like a group project to do which I'm sorry what lecture is setting group projects in pandemic times like it's not okay but anyway so I've got like a full day of studying so need to be up and at them this morning. Uh, we'll catch up with you when I do some reading later. I'm aware I haven't spoken on here in a couple of days. I've just had a couple of clips of what I've been doing. Had some friends um, down to visit and we were studying together and then eating food and drinking wine and not doing anything too exciting. But it was so lovely. My heart is so full. I'm so happy to have wonderful female friends in my life. Um, so that's good. I also got to see my mum today. Um, we had a spa trip planned for ages and luckily the place we were going was um, very COVID secure and had all of their regulations in place so we felt safe going yeah. there. Nice. A to spend time with her and B to rest my tired body and feel rejuvenated in some way. Um, but yeah I thought I would show you what I'm reading. I thought this is a book I'm reading for academic purposes, but it might also be of interest to other people. Um, I've been reading it for the last couple of days. I won't finish it this month, but it is Sue Palmer's 21st Century Boys, How the Modern Life Can Drive Them Off the Rails and How to Get Them Back on Track. It's really, really interesting. I've only just started the intro, but I pulled out a couple of quotes, but even so far, I'm trying to find where I earmarked something. to show you that in, it's quite an old book, I think it was published in 2010, but uh, the, British Me the British Medical Association reported that boys aged five to 10 were twice as likely to suffer from emotional, behavioral or mental health need. That's crazy, don't you think? Um, 
but yeah, I'm really liking that so far, and it's interesting if any of you guys have boys or have um are interested in learning more about the education of boys um yeah, one I would pick up. I got it on um second hand for like three quid um because it's quite an old book, but really, really interesting. um what else do I have to share with you? Oh. Today at the spa, I read a really interesting, this is a very wet copy, but um, I started getting the New Yorker delivered because they do that deal. I think it was like three months for, um, I don't know, 10 or 12 pounds or something. But I read this article, I would try and find it online and link it below. It's called The Shaming Pandemic, How Internet Culture Has Further Weaponized the Coronavirus. And it was really interesting. So it looks at, if you've read So You've Been Publicly Shamed by John Ronson, that idea of cancel culture and online vitriol and the pylons that we see on Twitter and stuff. And this is setting it in the context of the coronavirus. So it looked at, if you remember the first case they had in Vietnam and the girl was like a socialite on Instagram and she was deemed like a super spreader. And they talked about her experience. One man in New York who was unknowingly carrying the virus through a hospital and the experience his family had and so tragically then ended up taking his own life because of the pylon that he experienced and the way online culture seeps into real life because the mailman stopped delivering his post and he um his family were being attacked and uh people refused to serve them in restaurants and stuff like that after they recovered um I will try and link about them below, but it reminded me of a lot of the things I've been thinking about recently, as well as um, the information that's come up in the book I mentioned in my last vlog, The Men Who Hate Women, the idea of information moving from the online to the offline. So I'll try and link that New York article below. I'm still reading Burnt Sugar. I'm almost done. Honestly, I've been not great at picking it up because it does require quite a lot of my attention. That last little bit left to finish I'm working tonight um nannying so I will be able to finish that when the kids go to bed so that'll be good and then I am on page I don't know what of show me where it hurts which I spoke about in my last video the essays on invisible illnesses just read a really phenomenal one on Frida Kahlo and the idea of the fetishization of disability and how she um as a feminist icon is often lauded for her feminism and not for her disability and the way that we even crop her images and the images that are constantly circulated of her don't include the images of her body that was so um obviously disabled and she used that as a representation of her experience but that is often flattened by the idea of her just being a feminist icon thought it was fantastic um don't think i'll finish this this month because i'm taking it slow because i really want to savor it so i won't wrap it up until november but rest assured i am loving it good morning happy weekend my friends um i am just tuning in because i realized i've been tidying my flat this morning because it's been looking a little messy i forgot to show you a bookish thing that my friend gave me when she came down to visit which was so sweet um i always feel bad for my friends buy me books because I feel like they're probably nervous that I, I obviously own a lot of books already and read a lot of books but um I don't own this one and I'm very excited it is On Connection by Kay Tempest um Kay Tempest is a, a non-binary poet singer writer um they were previously publishing work under Kate Tempest and this is their first collection or musing um under their name k which is really cool i'm really excited to read it i've followed their work for a long time but i've never read um anything they've put out so it says it's a meditation on the power of creative connection exploring how and why create creativity we choose to practice it cultivate greater awareness with it and establish a deeper connection with ourselves and the world so very beautiful published by faber and it's blurbed by ali smith and marlon james so yeah i hope i will probably get to that next month in non-fiction November and read it in an afternoon because it looks like the perfect kind of book for that. As for what I'm doing today, um, news in the UK is looking pretty grim to be honest so sort of keeping myself to myself, tidying my flat, doing washing, all those boring errands. I wanted to swim but I'm going to show you outside. It's not looking particularly great. Ooh. To be honest, I'm being visited by this dried leaf. Um, 
so yeah i might go sit in a coffee shop and read but to be honest i'm quite happy in my flat and then i'm gonna do a movie night tonight with my boyfriend i don't know what we're gonna watch something on netflix because we're lazy last night babysitting i watched the adams family but i fell asleep half of it but it was good i was looking for hocus pocus my favorite halloween film but i couldn't find it anywhere i'm not a scary movie watcher or reader so halloween weekend doesn't really do it for me plus the pandemic is uh, scary enough but yeah, I will update you with what I read. It's actually the is it the thirty first today? So I'm gonna film a wrap up. I haven't finished. I've got loads of half finished books, but no pressure. I don't really care. It's fine. So I'll probably check in with you later today or tomorrow. Like giants whispering secrets. Crocodiles can be found in Africa, the Americas, and Australia. Doing my makeup for the first time in a while. Um, I don't know if this is annoying to do this while I'm talking to you, but it's the weekend and I'm going out for brunch. We just got news last night. I don't actually know when this video is going to go live, but, um, the UK is going in, or not the UK even, England is going into further lockdown measures on Thursday. So had brunch but with some friends anyway um, and obviously we want to go ahead because um, from Thursday everything shuts again basically. What is this piece of hair doing? Um, I feel like I look like, I don't know, a Swiss yodeler and also um, your nan in this outfit but <laughs> I really like this. I haven't worn it in ages. But yeah, I'm going to brunch, but I'm also then going to go, because the place we're going to eat is right, where is my daughter? Is right next door to my favourite independent bookshop. So it would be amiss of me to not go in there, especially since they're closing on Thursday. Um, going to go and spend some hard-earned money on some books that I've been meaning to get for ages. I'm also going to text my boyfriend and see if he wants anything because he's obviously coming back to the UK quite soon and um, he might want some things to read. So yeah, I'm going to do that and I will take you guys along with me. I'm so excited for breakfast. Does anyone ha else hate going for brunch because we're going at like 11 and I'm been up since eight and I'm so hungry. I've eaten like half a banana and a snack bar, which is just pointless. I should have just had breakfast and then made my brunch my lunch. But anyway, that's what the plan is. I will show you my beautiful local bookshop if I can. And I will also come back and show you what I picked up. I have an idea of what I want, but also they have really good curation and displays. So might just see what takes my fancy um i also have a 10 pound like national book token to use and a five pound off voucher from the uh like independent bookshop weekend that they gave away when i was buying independent when i was buying from there because i'm independent um so yeah i will gather all those things up also have a big pile of books i'm taking to a friend i have filmed a video i think that's already gone live showing you the books i picked out for her so yeah, I will be giving those to her, so a bookish morning to be had by all. Um, and I'll catch up with you guys when I'm at brunch.
I'm a little out of breath, I need to de-layer. I'm just back, you would have just seen some clips. I went out and had such a lovely Sunday. I don't know what the time is now, I've lost my watch, which is so annoying. But um, I went to brunch with a couple of girlfriends and then we went to just browse the trash shops, which have now started opening on a Sunday. I don't know if they're opening this Sunday just because lockdown and like they want to get like stuff sold or if they have um, gone back to normal rotation it was kind of busy but I just kept my mask on and I did loads of errands that I was been meaning to do I also went to the bookshop as I showed you because I had a £10 voucher um, to use so I think I already said in the clip not said but showed you in the clip what I bought but I got Daddy by Emma Klein this is Emma Klein's short story collection which is getting very mixed reviews but I was tempted because there was a clip on the High Low podcast of um, Pandora Sykes reviewing it and talking about how much she loved it and I'm really intriguing about you know toxic masculinity at the moment and I think this touches on that and Jay from the bar in the bookcase reviewed it and really liked it um I also can't decide if I like the US or the UK cover better but I loved her novel The Girls and I was chatting to the woman in the bookshop who sold it to me, the bookseller, and she was like, oh, please come back and tell me what you think, because um, I liked the girls, but I loved the writing style, but I wasn't that into the story, whereas I loved the girls because I'm a big reader of cult biographies, and I read have read quite a lot about the Manson family, which, if you don't know, the girls is based off that. Um, and then I saw two copies of the girls in two different dress shops, which was crazy. But then I also picked up... A paperback copy of The Private Joys of Nana Maloney. I listened to the author speak at Cheltenham alongside Paul Mendes. Um, I'll try and link, I don't know if it's gone up on a stream or whatever. And then Grace, Grace on her channel was talking about um, how lovely the author is and that she had read the book and really loved it. So I think I really like it and I think it will be perfect for a light read. It's a, I think it is it set in Manchester? I feel like it's set in the north and it deals with that multiple identity of being um British and from somewhere else so she's British Nigerian and she's like building a relationship with her estranged father I believe um so yeah that sounds really good and of course I don't need any more books but supporting the bookshops before they close and they are two that have been on my list so I thought I would just get them while they were there then for a pound I found a battered copy of Animals by Emma James Unsworth I've already read this um, but it's one I would like to reread because it's a perfect trash. Trash is the wrong word. It's a sort of really quick, pacey read about female friendship. And it's also set up north. They made a film of it, but they moved it to Ireland for some reason. And it, I didn't love the film, but I loved the book. You have to suspend all belief in privilege and being <laughs> irritated by characters who hate themselves and hate you. But it's a really cool cover and... Yeah, one I would like for my shelves because it's also one I would lend to friends. And it was a pound in Oxfam, so we love that. What else did I buy while I was out? Oh, I went to the bulk food store. I'm not sure if I showed you that. Um, which is where you, like, fill up items without plastic. Um, sometimes they can be kind of expensive, and I think there's obviously a wider conversation to be had about the accessibility to more environmentally friendly products. But one thing I would recommend if you've never been and looked in one before because you think they're expensive is going to look at the spices. So I bought, oh my God, it's so strong, garlic powder, curry powder, and bicarbonate of soda, and all of this cost me two pounds. So like in the supermarket, a thing of curry powder is like one pound 20. So I always get my spices in there. And then what else did I buy? Oh yeah, then I went to the little homeware store. I'm not sure if I filmed that. And I got four candlesticks in these cute colors to fill up on. Up there, some of mine have been melted down. I couldn't remember what colors I needed, but I was sold by these ones, so that's what I picked up. Um, and I was listening to Inglorious Empire. I've got about an hour left. And it was really interesting, they were talking about the um, internalized like colonialism and the level of English that they taught citizens in order for them to be uh, educated, but not too educated that they could form their own rebellion against um, the English and the idea that there's a lot of people still alive now who believe that who are Indian and believe that the colonialism was good for them and the idea of internalized um, I guess like indoctrination 
that was really interesting. But I think I will sign off this video here because I imagine mine is very long. But I don't think I really finished any books. <laughs> I honestly, after the news last night um, and the impending lockdown, I just couldn't bring myself to read. So I watched a film, which maybe you saw, um, David Copperfield with Deb Patel based on a Dickens book. But I actually really like the film. It's kind of like a tragic, tragic comedy. Um, and it was really funny and I was really swept up by it. Sometimes I'm quite partial to a period. My finished with Burnt Sugar. I think it's going to be a four star for me. I've had a very disjointed reading experience, which I'm kind of irritated at myself for because I think if I had read it in another time, I would really, really have loved it. But I do get where um, the author is going and appreciate her writing. I think some of the paragraphs and passages are really, really beautiful. I'm just think it would have been better if I read it in a shorter span of time because reading it over a week and a half is quite long for me. Um, but yeah, you will see that wrapped up in my, or you would have already seen it wrapped up potentially. Can't keep my head around what order I put these videos up in. But yeah, that is all from me and I hope you guys like this vlog. I will continue to do vlogs, although they're going to be mostly in these four walls from now on and maybe some clips of swimming and the beach if that would bring anyone any solace in, the, in England at the moment. But thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys again soon. Bye.